Hey, there we go. Hi, everybody. How's everybody doing tonight? <laughs> what up, ED? Hey, Tugboat. Hello, my aunt. I'm Keith Rudak. Hey, Poopy Pop. Hey, Keith. Hope everybody's doing good. I'm going to try something new. Let me see if this actually mutes my microphone. So let me know if this mutes. And now I'm unmuted. Excellent. That's going to be much easier. Hey, Jackson. Oh my gosh, yeah, the last couple days have been really nice. The clouds have been beautiful in Oregon. Oh, congratulations, Keith. It's always nice to get a little rain down there. Look what I got. All right. This came in this week. This is the trade paperback for The Lonesome Hunters, The Wolf Child. And it's got four issues. It's got one of my favorite covers of all time. I love this spread. I'm so proud of this one. Um, yeah, really proud of this book. It's got a little bit of sketchbook stuff and it's got a bonus story in it. Do, do, do. It's got just a little four page black and white story in the back that is only in the trade. So that's pretty fun. And that's like the most exciting, well, not the most exciting thing, but that's the best thing that happened all week was getting that. And here's this guy on deck for tonight. I think, um, I think I'm gonna be able to finish it tonight. Um, Rudak, thank you for asking. That book will be out um, February 20... Oh, I gotta look. February 28th. End of the month. Hey, Mark. So, as usual, give the video a little bit of a like if you want. Give that algorithm a sweet little dose of love. <laughs> Jackson, uh, no, not much really. I am looking for a new, um, uh, um, like an art dealer, I'm trying to figure out what to do. I'm tempted to start selling my own stuff, but um, it's a lot of work. And pricing pages is really not my strong suit. Thanks, Mark. <laughs> okay. It is time. And I'm still keeping it all ink, although it was... Now I gotta think about it. I was gonna do this all ink, but all of a sudden I'm like, hey, I think I know. I, th I, think, I think I might do some watercolor, actually, to start. Keith, I think your YouTube is broken. I hope that it's you and not me. <laughs> Aha.
tugboat. I did think about doing a frisket, but I don't think I need it. And there's a there's a risk of like over frisketing, I think, because like if you when you cut it, you have to cut through, and you end up scoring the paper just a touch. And um, and that's not good. So I don't think I'm gonna frisk it. Hey Kelly, good to see you. I'm not Keith. Yeah, I'm not gonna talk about Cadence tonight. I'll probably talk about it pretty soon, but um, I'm not gonna talk about it tonight. Although I guess I will say something that is kind of interesting, like um, Mott's been going through and doing like a full um, inventory of like all my pages that I've done, like in my career, and um, and it's pretty fascinating. Like it is, I think they got up to almost two thousand pages today, like of inven in inventory. Which is so many pages. I don't know if, um, like when I started doing comics, I didn't think about, like outside of what my, my first book, it wasn't like, oh, I'll make like thousands of pages, but holy shit, I've drawn thousands of pages. And... I think that I've been making comics now for longer than I was making video games, which is a pretty big deal, because I was making video games for um, for 12 years. And I think maybe this year will be my 12th or 13th year making comics. Which is also one of those things, when I started making comics, I wasn't like... Like, I didn't have a clear plan of what I was going to do. 13 years, Maude says. Um, so, yeah. So, I didn't, I didn't know if I was going to be able to do it for, you know, six more months or if I'm going to be able to do it for a couple years or what. But um, 13 years feels pretty good. Jackson, I'm curious how that worked. If I bought a single page from Cadence, would you mail it to Cadence and then mail it to me? No, Jackson, usually Cadence um, kept everything on um, in stock. So, and that's really the advantage of having an art dealer is that like someone can buy a page and um, you wouldn't even know it until, like I wouldn't even know it until, uh, you know, payment showed up. And it's nice to have, like, contact with, um, you know, the people who like your work and your fans or whatever. Um, but, yeah, it is just, it's so much work. Dealing with pages, getting them all packed up. Going to the post office. 
Like I, um, we did the Harrow County board game Kickstarter and one of the, um, what do they call it when you unlock a thing? But one of the things that people could buy was a bunch of original art. And so I had to mail out 16 of those. And it took me like a full day to pack those up. And that was just the packing. And then when you go to the post office, you're standing there for an hour while, it ta while they put them all in. And then they tell you like um, a tier, thank you, Mark. Or a stretch goal. Yeah, I don't think it was a stretch goal because it wasn't for everyone. So I think a tier is the more appropriate. But, um, yeah, it just takes forever to mail stuff. Pack and mail. No, it didn't quite have that many, but they had close. No, they didn't have close. They maybe had about like half of that, which is a lot. Yeah, Edie, I am gonna. I'm not looking just yet, but I'm. Um, I'm thinking about it. You know, that's a good question, Keith. I don't know how if pricing will change or not um, on my pages. Like, I, I really don't think that. Um, like, I think I'm going to get a, a broker or a dealer um, eventually. So I'm hoping I don't have to think about it too hard and I can just figure out who's going to be the, the dealer and then they can work all that stuff out. Pricing my work is like one of the things I'm absolutely worst at. It's really, really hard thing to do with your own work, especially because like I want always want to give like everybody you know deals and be like oh you like my stuff here you can have it for free maybe i'm not that loose with it but you know what i mean hey 
Hey, thunderstorm. Thank you. Yeah, it looks a little bit dark, actually. Let me see. Can I bring this up? Nope, wrong way. That's maybe a little better. Oh, hey, Lucas. I missed you when you came in. It's good to see you. I hope you're doing good. <laughs> yeah, right, Jackson. And there's going to be so many um, artists looking for um, new representation. Oh, wow, Jackson. That's a lot, man. That's a lot of original artwork. That's really cool. Hey, congratulations, Keith, on selling that other piece, that other painting. That's amazing. Hey, Math Raptor. Tugboat, that's his, it's not a robot arm. What is that arm made out of? He got his arm like, 
I don't know, spoiler alert for Breath of the Wild, like in the first 10 minutes he gets his arm chopped off or something. And then this guy gives him a... Another, like this weird looking arm. I guess it's like, I guess it's a robot arm. The other um, one cool thing, I, uh, I've had this Stream Deck thing for years now. I got it a long time ago to use to be my, um, to do hotkeys on my computer. And I uh, ended up not liking it after a little while. And um, just last week I remembered that it existed. And now I can like mute and unmute without having to like climb up onto my desk and try to hit my hit the button on the mic which is very nice Keith I don't know what a Sekiro is you saying what's sorcery about the stream deck it's like a, just like a macro keyboard. You can program it so the buttons do different things. And um, you can like write actual full like macros in it. Um, like with if then statements and stuff like that. So you can do really um, some really fancy stuff. But I just found that it never worked quite as good as just having a keyboard. for like, you know, Clip Studio Paint and stuff. Oh, Keith, I had never heard of that. I need to look up links colors on the master sword Oh, it's kind of purple. I was thinking it was blue. Yeah, like that. But here it is with its corruption on there. Yeah, Michael, me too, I think. Um, uh, I kind of, well, 
be honest, I have kind of mixed feelings about library editions. I think they're really beautiful, and I think that a lot of people really enjoy them. Um, and they seem to make money. But I, I don't think it's the best format for a book, really. Like, I prefer stuff you can read in bed. Oh, Keith, that's not a bad idea. Just going through pages. I should do a one uh, volume two when the Lonesome Hunters Wolf Child comes out. Maybe I should go through um, some of my Wolf Child pages. That would be pretty fun. <laughs> you still read the library editions in bed? Uh, man, I wish I could. I need something a little bit lighter. Like, I am so, like, on the cusp of having some serious carpal tunnel stuff anyway. Tintins are a lot thinner, though, Mark. What are they, 48 pages? Oh, Keith, I have switched to ink now. So I did um, all these base colors with watercolor, and now I'm going in with some black acrylic ink. Um... We're still waiting to see how the trade sells before they'll approve the next um, Lonesome Hunters tugboat. So, um, yeah, so hopefully we'll know in the next couple months how that does. So, you know, um, tell all your friends how much you love Lonesome Hunters and how uh, much they should read it, too. It's such a weird... Like, I think everybody, if you listen to, like, any podcasts with comics pros or anything, just about everyone will say that it's a very strange time for marketing, and it is true. It's just really, really hard to sort of, um, like, with the death of Twitter, with the um, direct market stuff getting all weird...
Oh, yeah. Book one is actually um, out of print, and they're they're going back to print. Like, it's, it's being printed right now, I think, as a matter of fact. I think that um, it's probably going to be put on a boat very soon to come back. So it should be back in stores, um, you know, in just a few weeks. <laughs> yeah, Rudek. Buy a copy for yourself, buy a copy for your library, put in requests at your local library that you'd like to read it, and they'll order a copy. Actually, that's a pretty good deal. If you, um, Even if you've already bought it, next time you're at your library, ask them to order a copy, and then obviously check it out when it comes in. Oh man, Mark, I didn't realize it was out of print that early. <laughs> That's a very good sign off tugboat. Hello, El Osama. It's good to see you. Thanks for stopping me in. Thanks, Emma. It does feel good when a color plan comes together. Because every once in a while you'll have a plan 
and you just think it's going to look amazing and then you do it and it does not and it's not quite like I mean that's one advantage of that's like the advantage and disadvantage of working digitally is you can sort of correct colors as you go along but when you're doing it on the page like this it's not as easy but the advantage of working on paper is that you get to make decisions and then roll with it and you don't sit there like I always do just doing tiny tweak after tiny tweak that doesn't actually matter or being afraid to commit to a choice <laughs> oh my gosh, Mark, that's awesome. That your niece was enjoying the Stone King. I um I find that I will sometimes skip parts of books nowadays that I'm not into. Keith, after this one, I have um, three others that are still to do in my in my commission list, and then am I probably gonna probably not gonna open up my commissions again until um, maybe kind of close to the end of the year. Right, tugboat, that <laughs> mute button works so good. I was so excited when I. Um, when I remembered I had this thing and I was like, ah, oh, that would totally solve a problem.
Oh, talk about, yeah, I saw that Otoboki Beaver was playing in Portland. Oh, on the 22nd. Yeah, man, I don't know. <laughs> I know I'm probably the, like, odd man out, but I'm still, like, skeezed out about getting COVID, and um, I have a hard time imagining myself sitting in a packed venue of sweaty people screaming punk lyrics. Not that I actually know any of the lyrics. <laughs> Emma, I used to use my finger for splatter too. And as soon as I, um, yeah, there was just one day where I was like, this, there's gotta be a better way. And I happen to have a pal palette knife sitting right there. Actually, I started to use um, business cards, and I would use whatever like weird business card I had f sitting around, but um, they would eventually just sort of get too wet and fall apart. So when I realized I could use one of these, it was, I was very happy. I think the next thing is highlights on link. Oh, thanks, Keith. I like doing the, um, I like doing commissions on stream, but um, it does slow it way down. slows me down and I've been like historically really bad with my um, commissions and it takes so long for me to get them done. This year I took on all these commissions in October because I had um, a couple weeks set aside specifically just to do commissions and then um, and then I got sick and I didn't get out of bed for three weeks and all my commission time went right right in the toilet. Oh, a mute animation would be funny. <laughs> I've thought about that. It's um, I kind of just do... Um, so the software I use for streaming is called OBS. And I goof around with it and set things up sometimes when I think it would be fun to goof around with it. Um, And I've had some ideas for animation stuff to do, but um, it's just waiting for me to feel like it would be fun and have some free time. Yeah, maybe I should just hire someone to do me do some animations for me. A hair dryer one would be really cute. Earlier today, I set up the um, end screen for when we're done.
Oh my gosh, Jackson, three years. I have had... Oh man, what's the longest I've done? I think I've done like six months in the past. It's way too long. Like, that just like weighs on my my schedule. Oh, yeah, paint splatter and pulling tape animations. Those would be very fun. I know you can do it in OBS. I just don't, I don't know actually how to do that yet. I don't know if I have to, like, render a video with an alpha channel or if it's a animated GIF thing or what. <laughs> Thanks, Keith. I um, am starting to really enjoy... Like, when you work with watercolor, you usually basically just work from light to dark. And I have been loving being able to come in with some light-colored ink and go from dark to light on some of this stuff lately. Oh, thanks for the offer, Pippi. Yeah, Keith, the, um, I really, I feel like when I figured out I could use acrylic ink and integrate it with watercolor like this, like you can't do watercolor over the ink very well, um, just because obviously the acrylic seals up, but, um, but it's fun. The big innovation for me was figuring out to use this glass palette over here. 
which you cannot even tell that I have white ink over here. <laughs> That's really funny. I have a couple puddles of white ink that are completely invisible. You may hear Tula. She's upstairs, but sometimes her little ticky tackies make it all the way down here. <laughs> That's my secret, is painting with invisible ink. <laughs> you know, he's going to win this fight with the power of, you know, the, the tri-power. Clear gesso. They used it on graphite drawings and then went over it with acrylic inks. I didn't know there was clear gesso. Was that like um, acrylic wash? Or wait, no, clear gesso. I'm sorry, not clear gouache. Oh, I think I may have, I think I know who you're talking about. Um, it's that dude who does magic cards. Um, and plays guitar. Ryan Art. Who's the guy I'm thinking of? 
Not Jeff Maricola. Although he's, his YouTube channel is pretty good. Uh, what's the dude's name? I want to say it's... I want to say it's Sean, but I don't think that's it. I don't know. I have to look it up. And I'm busy painting. One thing that I always have to remember when I'm doing this white ink is that it goes on and it looks totally opaque and then it'll dry and be like incredibly transparent. Oh, poor little Tula. I think this might be it. This feels pretty done to me. Thanks, Kelly. Thanks, E.D. <laughs> yeah, Matt's Raptor. I wonder if you um, if you hit that the pencil with um, some workable fixative first. I think that might actually make the gesso go over without smudging it too bad. Oh yeah, everybody don't forget the like button. Yeah, you do, people have used hairspray in for workable fixative, but um I don't know how similar it is. I never like 
I feel nervous about hairspray being archival. One, let's do, where's my guy? There we go. Twenty four. It's like signing checks. I'm trying to remember what date it what year it is. Well, thanks, Keith, for forcing people to watch my show. All right, here we go. It's tape time. Oh, that's funny. You can see from when I cut the frisket, I cut this tape too, apparently. Boom. It always looks so fancy to me with the white border. Uh, Lucas, I sure hope so. <laughs> I'm always nervous, even though I know I probably don't need to be. <laughs> yeah, there's little things about pulling up the tape mark that still make me still make me scared. All right, that's gonna do it. That's gonna conclude this month of working on this link piece. And I am happy with how it turned out. I think it looks pretty cool. Felt like it's a good... Like, I like the idea of it still. And I think the execution was pretty good. I always think it could be better, but... But whatever. Alright, everybody. So I hope you all have a great weekend and um, have a great next week. Remind me to ask for everybody's good news next Friday when we get started. That's a fun way to start these. Um, all right. Well, thanks, everybody. And don't forget to tell the people you love how much you love them. And I love all you guys. Take care.